we must worship Him. Must worship Him. It's an imperative. We must worship Him in spirit, heart, soul, and mind through the Holy Spirit in us, born again, all the things that go with that, and truth through Jesus Christ and His Word. That's no surprise that John starts off the, the, the Gospel of John with, in the beginning was the Word. We'll get to that in just a second. Verses 25 and 26. It says, you know, God is spirit, in verse 24, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, he who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Literally, he says to her, the one who is speaking to you is I am. The word, the, 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 the phrase, ego, ami, I am. It's important to note that. Because what he is saying to her is something that she would know from Exodus. Chapter 3, verse 15, 13 through 14. You know, Jesus said this uh, again just a, a little bit after this. In John chapter 8, let me read this to you. The Jews said to Jesus, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? You know, he was healing uh, and, and, and teaching. And, and uh, Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my Father and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. The Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died, as did the prophets. Yet you say, if anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who died? And the prophets died? Who do you make yourself out to be? In other words, who do you think you are? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. But you have not known him. I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But, do not, uh, but I do know him, and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. So that you said to him, you are not yet 50 years old, and you have seen Abraham. That, that was just a play of words. In other words, just, you know, obviously, you, Abraham has been dead for a long time. You know. Truly, truly, he says, Jesus says, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Again, the phrase, Abel, Ami. So they picked up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. Why would they pick up stones to throw at him? He used the phrase, I am. Go back to Exodus chapter 3, verses uh, 13 and 14. Jesus, uh, Moses has approached the burning bush, and God has now commissioned him and sent him out. He says, who do I say has sent me? Tell them, I am that I am has sent you. And that, the Hebrew people, they saw that and said, he's calling himself God. That's why they were going to stone him. They were calling, it was blasphemy as far as they were concerned. He does it again here in John chapter 4. The phrase within the framework of that verse, Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he, is I am. That same phrase, he's declaring himself to be God. Jesus is God. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John chapter 1, verse 1. Verse 14 says, And the Word became flesh. The Word, God, 
became flesh man. Verse 18 says, no one has seen God but the Son, Jesus. What did Jesus do? It says he came in the flesh. And we'll share this as we move towards communion. participation in the spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being full, in full accord of one mind. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. Why did he have to grasp at it? Because he had. But he made himself nothing. Taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Jesus became our sacrifice. All of the Old Testament sacrifices were simply pointing to the one and final sacrifice, Jesus Christ, and his blood spilled for us. So much so that even before it happened, John the Baptist would say in John chapter 1, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. A prophetic statement from John the Baptist. This is to have an impact on us. It, 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 if, if this is what we believe, this should have a major context of the, in the sense of, of the drive to worship the one true God. And to worship in all that we do, word and deed, to make it acceptable to the Lord. So that whatever we do, He can look on it and, and, be, and, and we can say, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. In the book of Hebrews, and this is a way of preparing our hearts for communion. The author of Hebrews writes, Christ has entered not into the holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true things, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters the holy places every year with blood not of his own. For then he would have had to suffer repeatedly since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the ages to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes the judgment, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. Jesus has nailed our sins to the cross. We are eagerly waiting for him. That's another act of worship. To say, I eagerly wait for the true one, true God. We are ascribing to him worth. We are worshiping him. It's, worship is a constant act. It's not a stagnant thing that we do here, we do there, we do here. It is to be a flow to our lives. We're going to, to sing the, the song, Take the Enemy Outer Courts. It's one of my favorite songs as far as uh, going into communion goes. And I'm going to read the words before we sing them. Take me past the outer courts into the holy place. The holy place is the place where the, the, the high priest would go once a year. Past the brazen altar, Lord, I want to see your face. The holy place was where they, they, they met to go into the holy of holies. Past the brazen altar, Lord, I want to see your face. Pass me by the crowds of people and the priests who sing your praise. I hunger and thirst for your righteousness, but it's only found in one place. 
take me into the Holy of Holies. The high priest could only go into the Holy of Holies once a year. And because of, 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 of a, an abomination that was performed, they, they, they tied a rope around, uh, and, and there was death involved, they tied a rope around the high priest so that just in case he blew it, they could pull him out. Take me into the Holy of Holies, Lord. I, I want to go where the high priest goes with a rope around him in case he dies. No, this is, but we're going, it says, take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Behold the Lamb who takes away the sins of the world, John the Baptist. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me into the Holy of Holies. Take the coal, touch my lips. Here I am, a reference to Isaiah chapter 6. Where Isaiah realized he was in the presence of God. He says, oh man, am I, 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 I'm done in. I'm done for. My, I am a man of unclean lips. And they took the coal from the altar of God and cleansed his lips. In a sense, that's what we see happening to us. Take the coal, touch my lips, here I am. As a result, I can be in the Holy of Holies. By the way, I come back to A.W. Tozer frequently on this one kind of a picture. God did not die. Christ did not go to the cross that we might catch a glimpse of the Holy of Holies passing by. He didn't die on the cross that we might visit the Holy of Holies occasionally. He died that we might dwell in the Holy of Holies forever. So, let's go to communion and ask the, uh, Rebecca to come, come, come forward and, and uh, Naomi and Rebecca lead us in the song, Take Me In.
Matthew records the Lord's Supper and the meal that Jesus and his disciples shared the night that he was betrayed. Matthew writes it this way. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Sure. And he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, Drink of it, all of you. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Communion is a celebration of what Christ has done, is doing, and will do. I think it's an amazing picture of the, of the whole. He has come. He has paid the price. There's no condemnation over us. We are children of God and, and, and have eternal life. We share in communion to remember what he has done, but also the reality of what he is doing. He is in the process of transforming us through the Holy Spirit, working us into the children of God he wants us to be. And he says he's going to share this with us again. And the point of, it says in, in, in my father's kingdom. What a powerful picture. We have that to look forward to. There is a day, a point in time where we will share this with Christ in remembrance of what he has done and what he is doing and what we will be for eternity. What an amazing thing. All of that resting here in these symbolic things that we do reference to communion. Communion, by the way, is an act of worship. Singing is worship. Opening the word you got together and reading it is worship. Praying is worship. Studying the word alone at home is worship. Walking through this, the city of, of Fortuna, if you are doing it in the act of the idea of God, open my eyes, open my ears, that I might be your vessel today, walking through the city of Fortuna, we're, we're doing everything in order deed, act of worship. We are saying, worthy are you, God, to direct and, and open my path. We recognize you are sovereign in all things. Again, worship is flows. It's not uh, something stagnant happens here, here, or here. It's, it flows. And we are a people of worship because God is Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace. We ask that you would go with us. Uh, I, I, I said the, the words, open our eyes and our ears, that we might uh, see the world through your eyes and hear it through your ears and then have your hands to touch, to, to, to minister, and your words to encourage and to lift up. We thank you. We ask that you go with us. We worship you. You alone are worthy of our praise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Would you stand as we close? And thank you for being here this morning. Lord bless. And uh, have a good rest of the day.